Good evening, ladies, as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here with some more Hearthstone Arena action. We're piloting a priest deck. Seems to have the same complaint I have a lot about a lot of my decks, which is that it's got pretty good cards, but the curve is a little bit off. Um, I was really worried in like the last third of the draft about not having any two drops, and I think I took a few too many two drops. Maybe a few more four drops wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world, but we never saw any Sengens or Yetis. I did pass on some Light Spawns. So it was a little bit of a tricky draft. Hades the Mage, ah, seems familiar. Okay, well, I think the six drop and the four drop have to go. The question is, do I keep the thought steal? If we have a slow start, thought stealing on turn three is excellent. Otherwise, I'm gonna regret not having a creature. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try to maximize my odds of getting some kind of early plays. If she has a slow start, I'll be kind of sad about it because then I'll wish I had the thought steal for the draw, but seems a little bit uh, less risky this way. Well, we end up having a first player curve. All I would have liked is to see my Worgen Infiltrator or North Shire Cleric on turn one. No! Ah, jeez, man. The days when people wouldn't make turn one plays against me clearly are over. Oh, I don't even know if I can play a Loot Hoarder in here. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm just going to have to do it. I, I can't I can't just, like, wait. Because if I play the Flesh Shooting Ghoul on turn three, it also lets the Amani Berserker get enraged. So... Whatever. Um, my opponent's not taking any chances. She's just going to ping the loot hoarder down. Ah, uh, you're too late, Northshire Cleric. You're too late. Well, there's the thought steal. Okay, so I am actually going to just play the Flesh Eating Ghoul. If she wants to, she can enrage the Berserker against the Ghoul and finish it off with the hero ability, but then um, I can play the Dragonling mechanic. The Amani Berserker will kill it. She can use the hero. Oh no, that's even worse. Oh god. Oh my god, that's terrible. Yikes, that's real bad. Uh, some games, you just don't stand a chance. Co Man, it's the se second time, actually, where, like, someone made a coin play on turn one, and it just wrecked me. This is why you put two drops in your decks, folks. Because sometimes you will win the game just because you coin out a two drop on turn one. This was so ridiculous. Oh, what did you do? Oh, no, no. Oh, my God, everything is terrible. Why? Why is it all so terrible? Jeez. Well, I'm getting smacked around like the Dickens here. <sighs> Fuck my life. Well, I could thought steal and hope for a frost bolt. So really far cry. I could heal this to turn off the enrage, but then what am I doing with three mana? I mean, I guess I'm thought stealing then. All right. Ah, uh, I hate. Th this is the worst thing in the world when you just have to play a creature. I'm going to play the, the tiger. So here's my thinking. She can't kill the tiger. And hopefully I draw Holy Nova. Like that's, that's the extent of my planning here. Um, the fact that I'm getting hit for nine damage is really, really bad. Oh, okie dokie. That's bad. So I, I need to draw Holy Nova or I lose the game is what's happening here. Cause this thing is just wrecking my face. Nope. Okay. Well, we're going to kill this engine, kill this Samani Berserker, which pretty much won the game for my opponent almost single-handedly. I mean, yeah, the Shattered Sun Cleric was kind of the icing on the cake there, but um, now I'm at 13 health. She can get me down to 10. It'll some just a fireball away from losing. I mean, as against a mage, you don't want to be in this kind of situation. But, I mean, I'm a priest, so I can heal up, but I can't afford to spend mana healing myself. It's just, uh, I, I, need, I need to, like, play creatures out, you know? All right, well, that's that. Oh, she's actually taking time to trade, so it's like she doubts her ability to kill me. Interesting. Okay, um, we need to play as many creatures as possible. And just hope she never sees any fireballs, I guess. I, I, I don't know what else I'm supposed to do. This game, I just never had a chance. Well played. Ah, since the end of that. I sense that. Why are you playing an extra creature? Why is she saying well played if she's not going to kill me? Interesting. Well, Holy Nova could still save me. Not a chance. Okay, well, let's go ahead and um, Thought Steal then. I get a Mountain Giant and a Frost Bolt. I would have gotten it. Look at that. Well, uh, let's see. Will Frost Bolt... I don't know. The Cobra... And... Play a Torn Warrior to slow her down, and let's kill a Mana Worm, and let's kill that thing, and pass the turn. I don't know why she said well played. That was a little bit 
Maybe she's holding on to Pyro. Oh, Pyroblast is 10 mana. She can't kill me with a Pyroblast yet. God, that game was annoying. Oh, she was saying, like, was she saying well played, like, legitimately? Like, legitimately, like, well played, slowing me down? Oh, I'm, I feel bad now. <laughs> Mad bomber. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Well, what we're gonna do is this. And, um, well, I think I need to do this. Oh, I should have played North Strike Cleric first. Well, whatever. We'll do that. I'll play it anyway. It doesn't really matter that much because she only needs to draw that Frost Bolt that I thought stole or a Fireball and she wins or, you know, breathe on me. Oh, she still doesn't have it. She doesn't have the kill. That is amazing. So I just wasted a card by not playing North Strike Cleric first. That could be my undoing, definitely. I'm sorry. Why is she saying sorry? Is she going to play a Fireball? Oh my god. I don't know I don't know if this person's just like fucking with me or if she's actually holding on to like a pyroblast. I think she's holding on to a pyroblast. What a dick bag. Uh, if you have a pyroblast in this kind of a situation, just you know just you know get ready to play it and win. You don't need to keep saying I'm sorry and well played. There is such a thing as, you know, less is more in the in the world of emoting. Okay, so there is, in fact, the Pyroblast, as guessed. So, maybe I could have healed myself a bunch, but, eh, I, th I think that game was pretty much over after the Berserker got buffed by the Shattered Sun Cleric. So, yeah, she just had a two-drop and won the game because of it. Otherwise, I think I would have had a really strong chance to win, given that the Pyroblast would then have been pretty much a dead card in her hand, and she never played any mass removal or anything. Okay, well, uh, glad we got that out of our system. So hopefully now we're in the loser's bracket. Going to be playing some easier folks. I did say at the beginning I thought pretty... I was pretty confident this deck could make it to four wins and keep up my consistent streak as Priest. If I don't make it to six, that will mean I performed very statistically poorly because 80% of my games have gone to six or more when I've played Priest. Siryu, the rogue. Interesting I lost to a mage, too, because um, priests are actually pretty good against mages. Okay, this is a decent hand. This would have also lost to Berserker. Coin, coin, Berserker into Shattered Sun Cleric. Although what really helped the mage was that I've had the loot hoarder to play. She killed it with her hero ability. She didn't actually use the Berserker against it. Maybe if I'd had the Mad Bomber. Well, the Mad Bomber enraging the Berserker, that wouldn't have been very good either. Oh yeah, I'm sec I'm first against a rogue. That sucks. Ah, oh, God, Jesus. Well, we're gonna have to hope for a hero bomber here. Come on, bomber, you can do this. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Well, that. <laughs> just, just a reminder. Mad bomber hits characters. Not just minions, so like it could have hit me or her. The fact that it killed her Defias Ringleader was really ridiculous. Uh, and by the way, that is not that does not mean you should play Mad Bomber. It's a good card. That was just ridiculously lucky. By the way, a quick bit of Hearthstone etiquette: um, when that kind of a thing happens, don't say I'm sorry. You just you just end up looking like a big old dick. So I uh, wanted to play Lightspawn, but I'm not that keen on the Berserker killing my Raid Leader, so I will quote-unquote waste the Defender of Argus here to kill off that Berserker. So now my opponent can, of course, use the Dagger to kill the Raid Leader or perhaps Fan of Knives to finish it off or something, but yeah, there's the Fan of Knives. I'm okay with that. I mean, she draws a card, but it is her whole turn. So this is pretty solid, honestly. I will just um, spend as much mana as I can. So this is, I'd say, a very, very different game from the previous, where I have good board presence, good card advantage. And if she dares to play anything with two or less attack, like a Gurubashi Berserker, I mean, I, I pretty much just win the game if she plays a Gurubashi Berserker. I am getting to be less and less a fan of that card. Or if I can steal anything with this, it's just such a, such a game changer. Oh, man. Okay, so on the one hand, it sucks that I can't steal that with the Shadow Priest, but on the other hand... The fact that um, she played this into the tiger kind of shows that she's desperate, so I'll take that. Now, here I'm going to just play the light spawn and heal up. Now, a reasonable move would have been to play the ghoul 
heal this and then play the warg and infiltrator get the goal to be a 3-3 but i like this 5-5 a whole lot here it's vulnerable to silence but other than that it's just huge and awesome and if i do top deck a temple enforcer i'm in good shape i did not play around betrayal in the slightest the defender of argus should have been in the middle and now my light spawn dies because of that that sucks oh god that makes a really huge difference still can't steal it with the cabal priest unfortunately Shadow Word Paint I don't think is worth using here. We'll just um, do that. Kill this thing. Heal that thing. And play a Loot Hoarder. Let's actually play around Betrayal this time. Okay, so she has five cards to my six, soon to be seven. And if she ever plays anything with two or less attack, I'll steal it. Assassin wow, assassinate on a ghoul. So this is a five mana spell killing a three mana creature. That is a win. This is very, very important, I think, in Hearthstone. You cannot let yourself get angry every single time your opponent kills a creature. There are times when it's like, yes, that's very disappointing, but there are times like that when it's actually really excellent. Okay, well this is starting to if I if I if I dare say so, put the nail on on the coffin here. I mean Rogues actually aren't super great at dealing with really fat creatures like this. There's no Blizzard, there's no Cone of Cold, there's no Hex, Assassinate's super expensive, I, I don't even care. This Tiger did its job, it killed like three creatures and then ate an Assassinate. Yeah, now she's playing this. I still can't steal it, unfortunately, with the Priest. That's very sad and depressing, but that's okay. Uh, it'll, it'll find a use. We'll, um, you know... I think six damage is a lot of damage. I think we can put the pressure on here. Let's drop this down. Drop that down. And heal myself, I guess. I could actually kill that. I don't really see much of a point, though. Let's save this for something better. So Holy Fire could be used to burn her out. In fact, I am threatening lethal damage. Is that another betrayal? Nope. Shiv, okay, that's fine. So she kills half a card, and she gets her card back. That's not a problem. That's the third assassinate. I actually am going to say that this rogue probably overdrafted assassinates. That's three now that she's played? That's too many. You really don't need that many assassinates. Oh, and then I've baited them all out just to play the Sunwalker. Let's see, can I win here? What is this? Two, four, plus five is nine. Yeah, I can't win just yet, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, take it slow. I don't see any reason to be ballsy let's just uh drop that thing if she has a fourth assassinate well good for her but this should be really really good now i mean the best thing i can think of her having apart from some kind of legendary well like the black knight to destroy it maybe or a faceless manipulator as an epic to copy it but i mean normal means of getting rid of this are uh, very difficult she's actually gonna whack it with her blade well that's fine all i really wanted was for it to hit once that's enough for holy fire plus the mechanic to get the kill She's going to eviscerate it. That's not good enough. She needs another eviscerate now for this, and then I still have, you know. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that was that was a beatdown. I certainly feel better about getting smacked around by that mage after this game. And to be fair, I did get a bit of an advantage when I, you know, played a two-three that killed a or killed, played a three-two that killed a two-two and a two-one. That was. A stroke of luck. I think, though, that I had a pretty good chance of winning that game even without that. Because what happened was, as long as the Mad Bomber hit the Bandit, which it was likely to, the odds of it... Let's take a look. What are the odds of it not hitting the Bandit? That's three-fourths to the third power, so... Nine. Yeah, there, there was only a 27 in 64 chance that it would not hit the Bandit, so the odds were well in my favor that the bandit would die, so, so then the ringleader could have killed the bomber. She would have had an extra, you know, murloc, charging murloc, plus whatever she would else would have wanted to do on turn two. So um, I, I think I was fine there. It, it would have been okay. Okay, so definitely the North Shire Cleric is a keeper. Do I keep the Holy Nova? It'll clear out her his totems. I'll keep the Holy Nova against a shaman. That could be important. Shiny Pants. Well, this turns out to be a good decision. I've got turn one, two, three plays. And... A Holy Nova now. Ah, Shadow Word Pain. I'm very happy to see that because if he does play a 3-2, that's kind of the bane of the Northshire Cleric. I'll be in trouble. Luckily, he didn't get the 1-1 totem. Nope, not a chance. Spell damage is really irritating to see because it means if he has Forked Lightning now, it'll kill both of my things. 
But, well, it's, you know, can't, can't do anything about it. I mean, I could play Shadow Word Pain, but I'm not going to do that. If he has Forked Lightning, I still get card off the Loot Hoarder, so it's not the end of the world. He'll be overloaded next turn. Nah, he has it. Damn it. They always have it. Well, they don't always have it, but it feels like they always have it. No, oh, no, he doesn't always have it. What is what is this? Shattered Sun Cleric. Whoa. I'm okay with that. So the Loot Hoarder cycles. I spent two mana for this Loot Hoarder. He spent two mana for the Wrath of Air Totem. I played a card. He didn't play a card, but I get my card back. Whoa, he doesn't kill the Loot. What? <laughs> All right, folks, that, that, was, that was a mistake. That was definitely a mistake. So what you want to do here is kill the Loot Hoarder, of course. Otherwise, the Loot Hoarder kills your Shattered Sun Cleric and, you know, profit. So the question is, do I attack the Wrath of Air Totem and heal for a card? I think that's what we would call greedy. Let's actually just play the Flesh Eating Ghoul. Kill this. So I get value here because I draw a card off of that. And he doesn't, obviously. And um, I will actually not attack into that totem. So if he has Forked Lightning now, it'll still kill both of my creatures because it'll deal three damage apiece. So there is a bit of a risk there. But I think he would have played it last turn if he had it, and indeed he doesn't seem to have it, so that's, that's great. Okay. Well, let's think here. Um, I could, you know, if I had attacked the this Wrath of Air Totem last turn with my North Shire Cleric, I could kill it now with the North Shire Cleric. The Flesh Eating Ghoul would grow, and then I could kill the Chilwind Yeti with my Ghoul. As it is, unfortunately, I can't kill this with Shadow Word Pain. And I could attack this with my Ghoul, heal it, draw a card, but that seems very, very silly. Huh. Yeah, I should have attacked this last turn. No question about it. Now the Yeti's threatening to kill my North Shire Cleric. Now, I could, of course, Shadow Word Pain on this totem, and then kill the Yeti with the Ghoul, but the, uh, that seems weird. I think I'd rather put stuff on the board. So, yeah, let's just drop a Violet Teacher. Um, we'll kill the totem that way. We'll swing past. And, uh, yeah, if he wants to kill my North Shark Cleric with the Yeti, that's, that's fine. Um, I'll then be able to say, Coin, Argent Commander, finish the Yeti off. Get a 1-1 student off the coin and still have a ghoul which would be super huge so he really needs to kill the ghoul kind of like right now or else he's in a world of hurt well i his ideal turn would be to use the yeti to kill the north Shire cleric and something else to kill the ghoul ah he's actually going to trade so it's a conservative play here he's stopping the ghoul from getting bigger which is totally fair especially because he's getting a card out of it can't uh, contest the wisdom of that move but the north Shire cleric lives so i think this is the time then to do this i essentially get the card back like he got a card off the cult master but i get a card back because i kill his cult master without spending either any of my own cards let's heal this and draw another card now and i could coin out the dragonling mechanic but the hunter is almost as good so let's save the coin and swing one thing to keep in mind i do have holy nova here this becomes a holy nourish if i can damage my creatures Fire Elemental. Ah, oh, well, I can't damage them against the Fire Elemental, unfortunately. Nor can I steal that with the Cabal Shadow Priest. Uh, Defender of Argus? Uh, no, it doesn't really work. Uh, this is the wrong Shadow Word. Okay, well, let's play Argent Commander. Pop Divine Shield. Use the little piglet. Ah, oh, man, I gotta say, I officially respect Razor Brand Hunter. I don't know why I ever, like, didn't like this card. Like, I would actively avoid taking it. It is just a totally solid 3-drop. It's like, maybe not as good as a Harvest Golem, but it's just a completely solid drop that I am always happy to have in my deck. Well, he's got 7 cards to my... Well, lots more than 7. And I have the board advantage and the life advantage, so he's got to do something pretty spectacular. This is not spectacular at all. It just dies to my commander, so my commander got to kill 2 things. He's got lots of spell damage, but it's all about to die. I could actually steal the totem... Which is a very intriguing possibility, but uh, I'm gonna get greedy. Let's not steal the totem, it seems. Silly, let's, let's just go big here. We're gonna play a tiger. Let's uh, kill that. Kill that. Swing for three, and let's heal my Violet Teacher. She's got a really nice body. Let's keep it that way. And pass the turn. Okay, well, I'd say I'm resoundingly winning right here. He, he really needs to catch up. It's possible, of course. He could have really good cards. 
That's this at this point. This is this isn't good enough right here. Especially if he doesn't buff it, I'm gonna steal it with the Cabal Shadow Priest. Oh, that's really not good enough. Flame Tech. Oh no, that's not good enough at all. Now, if I play the Cabal Shadow Priest and steal the Flame Tongue, I believe the Flame Tongue will go over to the right. So it's not really that useful. Can I actually win? Hang on, let's check for the win before we do anything else. This is five, seven, ten. Um, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, I can't win. But because this, okay, so what we do is we kill the flame tongue. Just, I mean, it just dies. We play the Cabal Shadow Priest, steals the Cobra. Um, let's, let's just play it safe. Let's trade that and swing there. If you can't use the coin, let's do a Worgen Infiltrator. So now I have even bigger board presence. Shamans just can't deal with this. Lightning Storm's not good enough. Thank you. I don't know what he could possibly do. Fire Elemental. Okay, so he's played two OP Fire Elementals, but he just hasn't been really playing good cards. Oh, is he going to play? Ah, it's cute. Well, if you could have, like, what is it, like, Ancestral Healing, which heals it and gives it Taunt, that would be something, but... I don't think that's enough. Okay, so now, yeah, I'm just not obligated to attack that Fire Elemental. Our creatures deal enough damage, even without the Charger, the Defender, or the Holy Nova. And that Holy Nova that I kept in my opening hand didn't even need it. That just goes to show what a resounding victory that was against two Fire Elementals. He needed a Forked Lightning there, or, well, uh, that Shaman might have just had a really bad draft, because we didn't see Lightning Bolt, Rockbiter Weapon, or Forked Lightning. Or Lightning Storm. Now, they all or some could have been in his deck and he just didn't draw them, but without those, the Shaman's going to be really hard-pressed to beat someone who plays creatures on, on a mana curve. My, my, my deck curved out very nicely there. Okay, that was a pretty good game. We made it to four as predicted. Uh, I can't remember if I've ever gotten below four as Priest. I don't think I have. Uh, maybe I'm thinking of Hunter. Ah, oh, shoot. Well, I'll, I'll check my stats at the end and see... Ah, perfect. I'm second. I was really hoping I'd be second. When you have two, three drops, it's good to be second. We'll plan to coin out one of them on turn two and the other on turn three. Now we have even more options. I do have two one drops in this deck. Can I maybe see one on turn one? Oh, man. Northshire Cleric would be so great against a Paladin. Because it just mops up these... I mean, it stops him from making the recruits. I can, like, kill it, draw a card. Nope! Not a chance. Not a chance. Well, let's see if he can do anything better than make a recruit. If he makes a recruit, I'll probably play the ghoul. The ooze, hmm. Well, against an ooze, I don't really want to play the ghoul. I think this is a job for Razorfen Hunter. So now... Oh, wait, no, that was stupid. So the ooze can kill the piglet, and then the ooze still kills that thing. Yeah, well, it's, it's fine. So if the ooze kills the piglet, I'll play the ghoul next turn, and then the ooze, and then the, the uh, hunter will trade against the ooze, and then the ghoul will grow a little bit. Oh, God. Oh, man. Could I get one? Well, you know, I really can't even complain after how the last game went, so that's fine. I was just hoping, maybe, against all hope, that uh, that Mad Bomber wouldn't work. Okay, so the Flesh Eating Ghoul just sort of dies here to the ooze. Let's play the Panther. Kill off the Mad Bomber. Pass the turn. So, yes, I could have made the Ghoul be a 4-3, but it would have died to the ooze then. I'm trying to trade off the ooze, you know, I'm trying to keep them from having creatures. It's hard, though. I don't have my Shadow Word Pain. So I can play a Light Spawn, which is big and threatening, but I can't uh, guarantee a board clear. In fact, I can't clear his board at all. He just needs to make a Recruit, and I'm toast. Oh, that's really irritating. So <sighs> this Panther can kill the 2-2, but this Divine Shield is, you know, still there, being all Divine Shield-like. Oh, no! He's doing something I once did, playing Pandas with the Argent Protectors. Oh, motherfucker, that's so irritating. Uh, all right, well, let's, let's do this and kill what we can. This is looking bad, though. Looks looking real, real bad. Cabal Shadow Priest is not for two turns. Can't use it against this anyway. I might, I might have to just steal a recruit with it. But yeah, I'll play it. I'll play it. Even if I'm just stealing a recruit, I will totally play it. Simply to get a Chill Wind Yeti and steal one of his creatures. I'm, ha I'm having a devil of a time clearing his board here. Imp Master. Oh, interesting. Well, this will just die to my tiger. Or my, not my tiger, my light spawn. So that's fine. Oh, it'd be so awesome if I could steal it right now. Oh, bummer. 
Still can't play the ghoul, because, I mean, it just dies. So, we gotta kill this thing, definitely. And play the tiger. So now we can kill the light spawn pretty easily. Uh, I have not been able to clear his board at all, and it looks like I might be stealing one. Look, luckily, there will be a 1-1 one, one for me to steal. Pretty much guaranteed. And he still has this Argent Protector to recharge the Divine Shield on this ooze. Man, I've been just dying to two drops. I, I, is my deck so fragile that it can't handle the opponent playing a two drop? That's so bizarre. Uh-oh. Is that a Hammer of Wrath incoming? Sure is! Ah, oh, balls. Well, the cool thing is that now I can steal this, which is infinitely better than a 1-1. Ah, uh, my tiger feels ill-equipped. And he's just keep pounding me, by the way, with this ooze, like, all game. So, like, I'm just getting smacked down. Holy Nova would be nice. Okay, we have to play this Mad Bomber, I think. Ah, uh, even if though it means... Hang on. Does, even though it means not playing a Shadow Priest? God. No, I think I have to. I have to. I need to get this Divine Shield off. I need to kill off these 1-1s. One okay, perfect. Fantastic. So, the Ghoul... I could play it and kill off the Ooze now, but these two things can kill my Ghoul. What's better, though? Loot Hoarder and kill and heal myself? I think, actually, that is better, isn't it? Yeah, I think Loot Hoarder and heal is better. So, I died a Consecration now, but uh, whatever. I can't play around everything. His board has not been clear since turn two. By the way, I don't want any comments on my channel about how good Mad Bomber was. It could have just as easily been, like, terrible and lost me every game. All right, he's going to get some more card advantage. I don't really care about him getting card advantage. I want him not to put more things on the board. Oh, this is wonderful. Why didn't he use the Argent Protector? What is more important for him to do with three mana? Interesting. What is he doing? What? I think I think this might be a new player, Mr. Sam the Paladin here, because he should really have played the Argent Protector. Well, I'm not going to complain. So I got a couple of options here. One is to use the Stormwind Knight that I just drew, plus the Loot Hoarder to kill the Shield Bearer. With three mana left over, that gives me a Flesh Eating Ghoul. Awesome. That could, be a, that could be a move. Another move is to play Cabal Priest, steal the Shield Bearer. That protects me. And I can use Loot Hoarder to kill one recruit and get a card, but unfortunately then the other recruit's still there. I kind of like uh, just killing that thing, because it puts an extra creature... Well, it puts the ghoul on the board and lets me start growing it. So now, you know, he can either kill my Loot Hoarder or kill my ghoul, and he needs a little bit of help to kill the ghoul. Card-wise, he has five in his hand, six, seven on the board. I have six, soon to be seven. I think that's okay, especially since I'm going to steal one of his cards. At worst, I'll steal a recruit. If I'm lucky, he might play a Berserker or a Mogushin Warden, and I'll steal that. So this is the card he just top decked for the turn. It's a Novice Engineer. Okay, so he's fishing. I could do with the Holy Nova here, to be honest. That would be pretty great. That would be even better, I think, than the Cabal Shadow Priest. Holy Fire has given me some healing. If he plays something big, I wouldn't mind that. Oh, no, oh, he's just going to remove my stuff. He's not actually going to play his stuff. Ball Sacks. Well, that's okay. So, he's going to kill my ghoul. He still has this weapon. Looks like he's trying to race me here. Which, yeah, I don't know if it's the right decision or not. I guess I can kind of see it. He's got 8 damage here. I'm getting pretty low on life. Do I play the Cabal Shadow Priest or do I Thought Steal that I just drew? I think the Shadow Priest is more important. So, let's do that. Um, let's get a card. I should have probably done that first. Wouldn't have changed anything. Let's do that. And do I heal it or myself? If I heal it, he has to throw the recruit away to kill it with his weapon. If I heal myself, I'm less at risk of dying. He can get me down to 10 health. He shouldn't be able to kill me from 10. I'm actually going to heal my creature. It's a bit risky, but I do have Holy Fire to heal myself some more. And I want to try to get as much value as I can out of my cards. Because he's been kind of owning me all game. Although I think he has played him precisely. He missed a really good chance to use this Argent Protector earlier he just traded creatures and made a recruit instead of divine shielding his creature and saving it and having a 2-2 okay so he's gonna go for my chillwind yeti here i presume that he's going to finish it off with the silver hand recruit that's fine so i've got this novice engineer ready to kill his next recruit and holy fire to kill something big he's playing small stuff that's just fine okay now he's gonna wake up 
and uh, play his Argent Protector. That's fine. I really couldn't care. Okay, that was great. Can I see Holy Nova maybe? Nope, 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 nope. Okay, what we need to do here, I think, is the following. I'm going to pop Divine Shield with this Engineer. I'm going to play a Raid Leader, which buffs my Knight, lets me kill the Bear. I'm going to play my other Knight. These guys are really good. Kill his 2-2, keeping him as clear as I can. And I think here... I, I think it's still right to heal my own guy, because rather than me, because basically... If he plays Consecration, I want something to survive. Otherwise, a Consecration would have cleared out my board. And he's still pretty far from being able to burn me out. I still have this heal. Oh, no. I've used my Cabal Shadow Priest. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. If I had stolen this, that would have been pretty amazing. Well, shucks. So, I got to deal with this thing now. That's pretty helpful. Um. Hmm. Okay. I think we've got to do this. I want to use this Temple Enforcer, but I don't think I can. Let's uh, do that. Note that he doesn't get enraged now because um, it just popped a Divine Shield. We're going to attack him, like so. Then Holy Fire, so that my creature doesn't take as much damage. I get a 1-1 one -one from my Violet Teacher. Heal myself up, and then the raid leader, I'm gonna knock a recruit out. So I'm very vulnerable to a consecration, but my Violet Teacher will still require him to use his other cards to finish it off. And then I've got a 6 6, and I can also get some card draw here. So even with a consecration, I could still win, and if he doesn't have consecration, I'm in very good shape. No consecration for him, that's excellent. I might actually win this game miraculously. That's two miracle paladin wins if I win this, because I feel like I was behind the whole time. Stormwind Knights, though, I said before that good 4-drops win games, and I guess these, these guys count as a good 4-drop. They have just been really crushing it for me all, all game. Now, the Tiger's a problem. It threatens to kill my Violet Teacher. But Temple Enforcer can make this a 3-8. So I think I might be alright. And he's hitting me rather than killing a creature off. A little bit overconfident, I think, since I'm still at a pretty high life total. Okay, well, I'm going to Thought Steal first. Get another 1-1. One, one. Wow, Boulderfist Ogre and Argent Protector. Hmm. Well, those are great, but I think the Temple Enforcer is still the play here to protect my Violet Teacher. I'm going to use my more damaged guy to kill that. The less damaged guy to kill his 1-1. One, one. And we'll swing the 3... Four. He can get me down to 12. I really don't think he can kill me, though, from 12 with three cards as a paladin. Then if he does attack me, the tiger's going to die. And then I can start healing myself every turn. Like, I can Boulder Fist Ogre, Argent Protector, heal. And that's the nice thing about being a priest. Once you're done healing your creatures, which I've been doing all game, you can start healing yourself and make it harder for your opponent to burn you out. For all Elemental, I'm not that bothered by. I wish I had a Silence in this deck so I could at least have a chance of doing this. This is fine. That's what Shadow Word Death is for. It kills my Violet Teacher. Or no, he's going for the throat. Well, he can do that if he wishes, but um, it's going to cost him. So we're going to go ahead and Shadow Word Death, the 9-9. Nine, nine. And here, I could play the Torn Warrior and put a Divine Shield on it. And like try to hold off the Frost Elemental that way, but that's risky. Much safer, I think, is quite simply just to run in with my Violet Teacher, finish it off with my Knight, and then I will heal myself. I think it'd be a little bit risky not to. We'll play a Taunter to prevent against Chargers, and yeah, I'll just put a Divine Shield on um, my Taunter and swing for two. Okay, so the one weird thing about this play is that it leaves me with no space on the board to drop this Juicy Ogre that I stole from him. However... Um, I, he will almost, he will at least play a recruit, so, um, I'll be able to throw away one of these apprentices and get the ogre on. Okay, that's not a big deal. It heals him, but I'm not really that concerned about his healing. I'm concerned about his ability to, to kill me. And this does die to my temple enforcer, which is fine. Oh, he's gonna give it divine shield. Well, that's fine. I'll just throw away my violet apprentice here. So the violet teacher, by the way, really spectacular card. Holy Nova is cute. I don't really need it, though. Let's just do this. That... Um, we'll just... Yeah, it's fine. We'll just do that. I 
feels, feels safer to me. Okay, we'll play the Ogre, and 10 health and him having no cards. I feel fine healing my Enforcer. That means if he top attacks a Consecration, this survives, which makes a pretty big difference. Well, I think we're threatening lethal now. 6, 12, 14, 15, 16, 19, 21. He's dead if he doesn't have some kind of really spectacular card here. Oh, he does have a Consecration in his deck. Look at that pro play protecting my Enforcer. Uh, he should still be dead, though. 6, 12, 14... 17, and then this actually now deals critical damage. Ah, oh, wow. We got a poor man's flame strike here, just in case I, uh... Well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use them both unless I have to. And he conceded really fast. Alright, Sam. Good game. He doesn't give me a well played. That's fine. I imagine he was very frustrated. But yeah, big creatures win games. That Boulderfist Ogre was not mine. That was his. I never saw Boulderfist Ogres. But uh, Cabal Shadow Priest proving her worth. I think we played Argent Commander there. Didn't we? Proving his, his worth. Temple Enforcer proved his worth. So it's a good it's a good proverb to live by, folks. Big cre uh, what What was it? The way that my friend put it? Um, sometimes a bad deck can be compensated if you have enough Boulderfist Ogres. Of course, Boulderfist Ogres here are a metaphorical device. It doesn't have to be exactly Boulderfist Ogres, but, you know, just big creatures in general can sometimes let you win games even if the rest of your deck falls behind. Okay, well, that was cool. Up to 5-1, and one, up against another mage. So the only class that beat us so far was a mage, and that was interesting because I think that priests generally do well against mages. I'd say priest is actually the best class against a mage because... They heal themselves, which is good, because mages have a lot of burn potential. They also can heal their creatures, which stops the OP hero ability from being a, being effective for mages. I mean, yes, they can still kill a creature on their turn, but they can't pick away at a creature over time the way they can against, well, every other class. As I've talked before, playing this against a mage is totally fine. If she wants to use her hero ability to kill both of these guys, that means she's spending basically two entire turns doing that, which I am A-OK -okay with. And if she's playing other stuff, well then that means she's not killing my creatures. So don't be afraid to play one toughness creatures against mages. The mana that they have to spend to kill them is meaningful. Now, of course, in the end game, what, 10 mana, mages do become crazy strong because at that point, two mana is basically nothing, especially if they've played out most of their cards. So yeah, at that point, the one toughness creatures really do start to kind of suck. Okay, well, this is a bit of an annoying hand. I do have a curve, like three and then four here, but uh, some of these, some of the stuff might not be useful depending on what she plays. Like, if she plays a Chillwind Yeti here, these are just dead cards for a long time. Water Elemental. Well, that's lucky. Normally, I think Water Elemental is a stupid, overpowered card that I can't believe hasn't been nerfed yet, but here against a Priest in particular, it's having three power as opposed to the four power of... The Chillwind Yeti makes a pretty big difference. It let, lets Shadow Word Pain be effective. If that had been a Chillwind Yeti, I would have been... Well, I would have been behind. I would have just had to play a Violet Teacher and hope for the best, but it wouldn't have been great. Okay, so the Flesh Eating Ghoul gets to grow a little bit. I hope it's a Fireball. No, it's a Frostbolt. I was hoping it's a Fireball or a Polymorph so that she'd spend her whole turn. Now she can kill off my 1-1, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, she got some card advantage because she did um, kill off, you know, two of my creatures... Or won one of my entire cards with just her hero ability. But we're still okay. So she basically has seven cards to my soon-to-be six. This is because as a second player, she started with an extra one. Motherfucker! Oh my god, that's annoying. And then she killed one with her hero ability. Then she killed another one with the Kodo. Okay, this is starting to slip away from us. But let's not despair just yet. Let's Thought Steal and get Arcane Missiles and a Fen Creeper. Is there even any point to playing this? I don't I don't think so. I think what I'm gonna do is this and this. Now I could arcane missiles for a 50-50 shot. Yeah, we gotta do it, folks. This gives me a 1-1, 50-50 chance. Oh, oh, okay, we got it. RNG has been doing well for us today. At seven mana, probably gonna fend creeper up and heal my violet teacher some more. Probably. But who knows what I'll top deck. Obviously a temporal enforcer will change my tune. Sunwalker, not the greatest against mages because they can ping off the Divine Shield. I feel like I say that every time. Ogre Magi does not die to Shadow Word Death, nor does it die to... Oh, jeez, that's annoying. It's really annoying. Frostbolt! Boo! Oh, my God. Those Frostbolts are killing me. Why couldn't those have been Fireballs? The fact that they would have cost extra mana would have been huge. So this... Uh, yeah. 
over the tiger? I think so. My hero ability is hilariously enough useless. So my opponent's a 20, but I, as a priest, I don't particularly care that much to get my opponent down to 20, especially since we're so far into the endgame. It's really not that low. I'd say that I'm pretty grossly behind, especially because I let a mage and tap with spell damage. There's nothing I could do, though. I couldn't, I couldn't kill that. I'm going to say, like, holy no, but and threw away my things. I couldn't kill that thing. Oh, this looks ugly. This looks ugly. I'm just going to ping off my student. That's fair. Shadow Word Death sitting uselessly here. Great. Shoo boy. Shoo boy. <laughs> that's, 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 a, that's a phrase. Definitely. Ah, Worgen Infiltrator. Thanks for coming eight turns late, buddy. Really appreciate it. So I could do Holy Nova. I could, like, run in with the Fen Creeper. Holy Nova. This would be down to one health. This would be down to two health. I can't kill them both. I can only kill one. Uh, ball sacks. Well, I think it's more important to play creatures than to play Holy Nova. So I will kill off the spell damage, which is really scary for me. And I'll play a Worgen Infiltrator. And I'm going to heal this up so that if she wants to kill this, she has to spend two of her mana at least alongside her Water Elemental to finish it off. This will then be at a maddening three health. God, so overpowered. Um, and then I won't be able to kill it off with the Infiltrator. Fend Creeper, uh-oh. That's unfortunate. So she has mana left over with her overpowered hero ability to kill off my Fen Creeper. Well, her Fen Creeper. I have to kill her Fen Creeper that she actually drew herself now. Uh, Holy Nova uh, might be what I have to do, although it's not that great. I think it's what I have to do here, unless I get something really great. Ah, Argent Commander. Hmm, yes. Yes. To Northrend we will go. How do we do this? I think actually the right way is like this. So that nothing gets frozen. And do I play this or do I heal that? Well, if I play this, they all die to flame strike. If I heal this, I'm getting one less creature on the board. I think I need to get as many creatures on the board as I can. So I will run into flame strike. You gotta take some kind of risk against a mage. And uh, if she has flame strike, she has flame strike. If not, I mean, I still would, they still, they still would have both died. No flame strike, excellent. Man, what is with these six toughness creatures who, uh, who have uh, not Shadow Word Deathable? Gah. That's annoying. Could you at least play something that dies to Holy Nova? Not a chance. Oh, that's great. Well, I can actually enrage this guy, which is an interesting proposition. Hmm. Do I use Holy Nova here? Do I enrage this thing? Oh man, that seems odd. Okay, we'll try it. I'll do this. Gotta kill that, of course. We'll play the Temple Enforcer and give this guy more health. Now, I'm not gonna heal him because I don't want to turn the Enrage off. We'll leave him as a 5-5. And I'm gonna swing there. And heal up my Argent Commander so he can't be pinged off. I don't know for 100% certainty that that was the right play, but... She doesn't get a flame strike right now or a blizzard right now. Oh, jeez. Well, there was nothing bad to take. That was really lucky, I guess. I mean, if she had taken the 6-6 six, six or the taunting 5-5, five, five, that would have been worse. This at least dies to the Holy Nova. Okay, I, I might be able to steal a win here, depending on what she does with 5 mana. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, God. Nope, she doesn't do anything good. Huh. Well... I kind of think very carefully here about my life. Flesh eating ghoul could be huge. So I could play Holy Nova. That does kill the Geomancer, the Smith, the Tiger. He takes her down to 13. I swing for 10. I'm, she's down to 3. I think that's what I have to do. So we're going to play the ghoul first. This is very, very important. And I'm going to Holy Nova here. The ghoul nice and big. Do I protect it? Uh, no. I am going to swing with the team. I actually never got hit this game, oddly enough. So now I've got three creatures that will all kill her. And I've got Holy Fire, which will kill her. And I think that's it. Holy Nova only deals two. Stormwind Knight only deals two. But if she cannot stop me this turn, she loses. So I think that was my best chance. 
If I mucked around killing her creatures, I think I think I only made it more likely that I would lose in the end. Okay, so what answer does she have for the Temple Enforcer? She needs she needs an answer here. Polymorph, Fireball, Taunt. Unlikely to have enough life gain for it to matter. That's not going to do it. Oh, I think she loses unless she has like a mirror image or something. Well, she doesn't have it. There's no zero mana spells that'll save her. So if she was going to do that. Okay, so she's waiting to see if I miss the win. I don't. Okay, nope, she concedes. Well, here we go, folks. Consistent priests. Very consistent class. It's not a gangbuster class. It's not like the one with which I have the highest average win rate. There's like two or three classes that I have a higher average win rate um, than with Priest. Even though Priest has my highest success rate by a pretty big margin. But Priest is amazingly consistent. It's just, you know, great when you can heal your creatures. Makes it easier to win board battles. I think in some ways the Priest's hero ability is one of the strongest. I suspect, though, that the Priest's class cards are not among the strongest of the other classes' class cards. Like, there's nothing wrong with them. I mean, you know, Thought Steal and Mind Games and um, whatever, you know, that is, this is a fine hand. Uh, North Shire Cleric, Light Spawn, Temple Enforcer, these are all fine cards. But if you look at, you know, a warrior with things like Fiery War Axe, Corcron Elite, Orson Commander, like, it's really crazy awesome stuff. Um, the Priest cards are good, but they're not, like, mind-blowing, is what I would say. Okay, so he didn't play a North Shire Cleric, and neither did I. We have a nice gentlemanly agreement here not to play turn one North Shire Clerics. Here's where crazy stuff might begin happening. I have a choice to make, which is either to play the Loot Hoarder and not use the coin, or play the Torn Warrior using the coin. Well, now that I drew the Razor Fin Hunter, that's an easy choice. We play the Torn Warrior. So I'm threatening now to trigger Enrage against the Novice Engineer. And then the next turn I can play the Razor Fin Hunter. The turn after that I can play a Storm of Night. And the turn after that I can play another Storm of Night or Thought Steel Loot Hoarder. So my hand's curving out good. Just uh, now I'm just competing against how good his hand is. These, my, my, I, I would say that um, if he has an awkward draw, then I'm going to get an advantage. But my hand doesn't have much to recommend it other than the fact that it is on curve. It is by no means, you know, an explosive hand here. It also doesn't have any answers if he plays stuff that's really strong and needs to be addressed. Holy smite. Well, this is fine. So he's not coming out ahead, but he's not coming out behind. This is okay. Now I could play Lude Hoarder here to try to kill the Geomancer that way, but that's fine. I'll, I'll sacrifice a piglet. He can, like, run in and kill the piglet with the Geomancer. I'm willing to do that uh, just to get the 2-3 out versus the 2-1. And, and also use up my mana efficiently. And yes, I'm aware I had a Mad Bomber and I could have tried to kill this, but uh, that, that's just not what you do. Oh, no, that's bad. Oh, uh, that's actually just a Chill Wind Yeti. Okay, could have been worse. Could have been worse. Let's not panic just yet. Northshire Cleric. Hmm... So that's an alternate possibility, but it'll just die to the Twilight Drake. No, we're just going to play Stormwind Knight here. I'm going to use the Hunter to kill the uh, thingamaboob, whatever that was, Geomancer. So the Twilight Drake cannot quite kill my Stormwind Knight. Uh-oh, I don't like how this, I don't like where this is going. Oh, God. So uh, my stuff can't kill his Acolyte. It means he's going to get two cards off of it. I uh, can't play the Argent Commander yet. This is actually super awkward. We could even say hella awkward, actually. Um, I don't really want to give him two cards, but I don't have any way of not letting that happen unless I Thought Steal something really great. Do I Thought Steal here? I don't think Thought Steal is the right move. You don't really want to draw cards when like it's a critical situation. I could Mad Bomber and hope it doesn't hit the Acolyte. God. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to play a North Shire Cleric. Heal up, draw a card. I might get Shadow Word Pain. Uh, I did not. Well, uh, if you're going to play with Mad Bomber, this is the kind of shit you have to do. I really need one of them to hit the Twilight Drake. Nope, nope, and nope. Okay. Well, folks, um, we're going to give him two cards. <sighs> that sucked. I really needed my raid leader there. That would have let me kill the Acolyte in one hit. And then it would have given him a target for the Sun Fury Protector or the Drake. Yeah, this is why bad buffs are better than no buffs, folks. 
It's gonna have a light spawn. Oh, that's a power word shield. Great. Woo! It's a 7 7, and I don't have any silence. Okay, one thing to remember when you play against enemy North Strike clerics, they draw cards when you heal your own creatures, so don't heal your stuff until after you kill their cleric. So here I could use the Argent Commander, but it doesn't quite get the Twilight Drake, so I'm just going to use Holy Fire instead. I could use the healing. Now I can kill the North Shire Cleric, which is very important. And I can kill this. And then, you know, he's got a 7-7, seven, seven, no big deal. The nice thing is I've got enough health that I can actually get hit by that thing. And its power does drop the more I hit it, so Argent Commander against it will be pretty good. It'll turn it down into a 3-3. Three, three. And then the Mad Bomber can finish it off. I lose the Mad Bomber, but no big deal. Okay, well, you're going to play another one. That's getting awkward. Mmm, boy. And of course, it's going to be a... Well, he's going to heal it back up to 7, so it doesn't matter. Ah, crap. That means it's going to kill my Argent Commander. Damn everything. Well, is there a better approach here? Other than Thought Steal and, and getting a Silence, not really. So we're going to do this. I've got to kill that thing. And, um, it's looking a little bit grim. So he does have some card disadvantage. He's got six cards to my seven, soon to be eight. But he is going to get to kill a card with the Argent Commander here. Or, he's going to get to kill the Argent Commander with his Light Spawn. And potentially do even worse things to me. Like, if he has a Temple Enforcer or something, I'm in some serious trouble. I could use one myself. Shadow Form. Well, uh, that's bad. Yeah, that's that's bad. No question about it. That is bad. I don't know if I can come back from this. It's going to take some luck, especially not with the hands I'm having here. Still can't kill this thing. I don't want to Thought Steal and then just whiff. Oh, I'd rather put more creatures on. Okay, we're going to kill the Novice Engineer. going to play the Tiger. And I'm going to play the Panther. So I could have healed this up to prevent Shadow Form from killing it, but I, it was more important to me to get this Panther out here, I think. Because what I can do is I can use the Panther to attack the Light Spawn. It becomes a 1-1. Then the Stormwind Knight can kill it without dying. And I get some good use out of the Stormwind Knight then. Oh my god. How many Light Spawns do you have? <laughs> good Monkey Jesus. Oh man. Or even bad Monkey Jesus for that matter. Okay. Well, we're going to Thought Steal here. Maybe he's got Silence. He doesn't. He's got some pretty sweet stuff. Oh, that's really good. I will definitely, definitely take that golem. Now, yes, it means this light spawn can kill my Cabal Priest. However, if it does, same deal as before. It's going to become a 1-1, one, one, then I can just mop it up. So he's not really getting card advantage for that. He has to choose which of these to kill. He can't kill them both, at least not with what he has. So actually, I have card advantage against him, partly because I've just been doing such a good job killing his creatures with my creatures, but also partly because I stole one of his creatures and partly because I thought stole and he, he hasn't. I think I used North Track Cleric once, too. So anyway, I've got card advantage here. I might be able to win off of that, because he can't heal himself. And if he's hitting me with Shadow with Mind Spike, I can heal it. It's like our abilities counter each other. Oh, geez. Well, he's got a really big threat. So he's going to try to burn me out here, which is reasonable. Crap. I can't deal with this. I only have six damage. I mean, I could deal seven, but then this stays as a 5-5. Five, five. Oh, boy. That's unfortunate. Well, okay. One thing I definitely have to do is heal myself. <sighs> the other thing I'm going to do is play a Flesh Eating Ghoul, cash out my Golem, finish off that Light Spawn, play this, I'll try to trade that against the Ogre. My hope is if he hits me and takes me down to 7, well, if Mind Spike takes me down to 5, Holy Fire would finish me off. Uh-oh, that actually allows him to kill off my Ventricle Mercenary and live to tell about it. Ah, uh, it's annoying. Oh, he's going for the throat. The cheeky bugger. Well, it really depends on how good his last two cards are. Uh, that's actually really fucking good. Damn. Okay. Ah, Defender of Argus might save me. Oh, I gotta think very carefully here. So if I run my Ventrico Mercenary into the Ogre... Man, you know what I needed? I needed Holy Nova. That would have actually let me probably win. But anyway, um... Okay. Gotta think very carefully here. 
I can play Defender of Argus. That would let the Ventricle Mercenary hit the Ogre in one hit. However, then um, the disadvantage is that it, I spend three extra mana for it, and I only have three mana left over with which to, you know, heal myself. Importantly, it means I cannot then play the Stormwind Knight. So let's say I run the Ventricle Mercenary in first. Then this thing's at one health. I can finish it off with the Golem. My Flesh and Ghoul is huge. I can use it to kill the Squire. I can use the Stormwind Knight to kill that. And then I can also drop a Defender of Argus behind it and have some taunts. I think that's actually the better play. So we're going to do this. Going to cash out my Golem. Play Stormwind Knight. Kill the Shattered Sun Cleric. Do I actually hit him with the Flesh and Gold? No, I think I need to kill that thing. Gonna play this. Oh, I never healed myself. I knew I was forgetting something. End the turn. Okay. Well, that was that was pretty good. He still wins if he has a Holy Fire. Um, looks like he doesn't. I didn't heal my Ghoul, so it died. No, good story, bro. All right. And he's okay. So that's actually meaningless. Okay, so he's tapped out. He's got no cards. But his cards that he does have are pretty good ones. And I draw something that doesn't really work very well because I need removal. Ah, oh, man. And his five toughness things are a nightmare for me. Crap. Well, I have to heal myself. Um, I might as well just kill this thing. And play out my stuff. And there's no point killing myself. Okay, so he can get me down to two health. Ah, uh, damn. If he has anything here that deals damage, he wins. There was that key turn. I'm just not 100% sure I played it correctly. When he had, when I had the Ventricle Mercenary and he had the Ogre, just not 100% sure I did that right. Maybe I did it wrong. Maybe I should have healed up my Ghoul instead of myself. Then he couldn't have Mind Spiked it. I would be at two less health, but I would have the Ghoul to trade in for something. Rasta Mental, oh, that's... T God, he's got so much beef. It's... Uh, what's for dinner, but I don't want it to be. Oh, he's still giving me a premature well played. I could top deck my way out of this, you ass. Just not with a raid leader. I'm not gonna give him a well played. That was that was a douchey... I can't win, can I? No, I can't win. That was a, that was a douchey premature well played. You don't know what I... We don't know what I have, man. A Sunwalker could have saved me. I don't know. Actually, it wouldn't have saved me. But whatever. Don't, don't, give, don't give premature well played. It's dicky. So, we lose the mirror match against the Priest. That was a very complicated game. It's possible that I misplayed it. It's also definite that if I had drawn Holy Nova, I would have smashed him because he was totally out of cards. And on the turn where he had, like, the Ogre and the Squire and the Shattered Sun Cleric that all would have died to Holy Nova, plus that would have, like, healed me and my creatures. And I would have, you know, been able to play a lot more efficiently. Uh, all of that would have let me win very easily. So, it's unfortunate that I didn't draw my Holy Nova and lost to a douchebag. So, that's that. Um, trying to make it into the money. We've got one chance. And it's gonna have to be against a mage. Zombie Pope is a great name, but I wish it wasn't a mage, because mages... Mages are outrageous. Alright, so we'll keep the two and the three. That's a good curve. Let's just hope she doesn't have a one drop, or a turn one play. Oh, please just don't have a turn one play. Please, please, please. Pass the turn. Right here. Just don't even think about it. Don't even look at your hand. Just pass it. Champions pass turn one. Champions pass turn one. No! Oh, no. That's terrible. That's... Ah, oh, fuck my life. Uh, can't catch a break. I mean, I'm sure I've caught plenty of breaks in this run, but... Problem now is she can just ping off this and use the mana worm to kill this, and I got pretty much nothing. I mean, I got the panther, but all she has to do is play any kind of a spell, and the mana worm will kill my panther. Shadow word pain... Well, here's what I'll do. I'll play the panther. If by some miracle she does not play a spell, I'll use the panther to kill the swarm and heal it. But if she does play a spell, then I'll shadow word pain to kill it. God, that mana worm ruined my life. Why you gotta do this to me, zombie pope? Why you gotta do this to me? Alright. Uh, slight change of plans. Very slight. You are late! You're late! For a very important date. We're going to Shadow Word Pain the Acolyte to stop my opponent from drawing cards. We're going to kill off this Mana Worm Menace, and we're going to heal the Panther. Very important to do that, so that the Mage cannot ping it off. 
This is why priests are good against mages, but I feel like the damage has been done. She has seven cards to my five, soon to be six. Now, I'm, I'm down one because I was first player, but I'm down another because she took care of my murlocs so easily. I guess that's the weakness of the murlocs. Don't do well against mages. Ah, she has her own panther. This would let her kill a light spawn, sadly. But, what's a man to do? Well, I could play this instead. Nah, nah, we'll just do this and this. If she wants to kill my light spawn, she is going to have to use her hero ability. That's 40% of her mana. That's fine. I've got this coming down to kill something, or this, depending on the situation. Actually, this would be a waste of health. I don't want to waste health against a mage, if there's a reasonable alternative. So hopefully what she plays will die to my Argent Commander. Well, this is going okay. I just don't like how many cards she has. For how many cards she has at this point, I should have done way more damage to her. Interesting choice. Very interesting choice. Wow. I'm going to say that... Okay. Now, obviously seeing Holy Nova, it's clear that her move did not work out very well for her. I'm going to say that was a mistake even if I didn't have Holy Nova, simply because, I mean, the Light Spawn's a stronger card. If you're going to facelessly manipulate, you might as well facelessly manipulate the Light Spawn. Anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play Holy Nova to kill her Panthers. That seems like a pretty good deal. This is uh, important to remember, folks. Your Holy Novas don't all need to be blowouts. It's fine just to two for one. And, and get ahead, especially when you're already ahead on the board. I think that was the right move. Now, I didn't attack with this because the damage isn't that important, and I don't want it to die to hero ability. If she plays a blizzard or something, then yes, it was a waste of two damage. But I've got um, nine damage in my back pocket here, so she's actually really close to death. Mana Crystal could actually be relevant, potentially. She's going to just spend her entire turn killing my light spawn. I'm fine with that. Fleshing Ghoul. Well... What I'm going to do is play this guy. Now, the reason I'm playing him is that he has Divine Shield. And what that means is that if my opponent... And yes, I will attack now. If my opponent um, plays Flame Strike, he survives because of the Divine Shield. And she doesn't have enough mana yet to uh, play Hero Ability and Flame Strike. Now, the reason I attacked with this guy now is, of course, Holy Fire threatens the kill. So she's dead unless she life gains or plays Counterspell or Spellbender. But if she plays one of those, she then also has to deal with my board, of course. And even if she does play, if she plays Flame Strike, you know, this lives, gets her down to one, then she's really screwed. Well, sorry, if she plays Flame Strike, that's her whole turn, and then I kill her with Holy Fire. Okay, so there's Flame Strike. You can see my thoughts in action why I played this. These guys would have just died. Anyway, Holy Fire, GG. Notice how I say well played on my turn, like a polite person. And look at that, Zombie Pope, the best kind of Pope. That's another Papa Boris's proverb. Zombie Pope is best Pope. Anyway, we get to seven wins, so that's nice. That's that's cool. This this raises actually my average for priest performance. And of course, I have never made it beyond nine wins with priest, so that would be nice. I'd have to win three games without losing a single one. I'd say my odds are less than fifty percent. Marximus, we have not, wow, I haven't seen a warrior in a freaking long time. It has been forever since I've seen a warrior, holy cow. I don't even know why, I think warriors are amazing. Of course, back in the day, I did really well with shamans, and I was like, I don't know why people don't play shamans more, they're freaking amazing. And then I, I fell out of love with shamans, I'm kind of worried that I will have the same thing happen with warrior. If you're watching the videos in reverse chronological order, I'm not going to spoil how I've been doing as warrior, but let's just say really fucking well, like crazy well with Warrior. My opponent has a very slow start, that's excellent news. So you just armored up, I love seeing that. I have a handful of four drops. It's not likely I'm actually gonna play the Raid Leader, it's much more likely I will play the coin in either Storm or Knight to kill his drop, or Light Spawn if his drop is a big one. Maybe I'll play Raid Leader and trade and trade up. Okay, yeah, we're playing Raid Leader now. That's, that's a good reason to play Raid Leader. Note that this is nerfed. It's uh, whenever you summon a minion with three or less attack, give it charge. Ooh, it's like a triggered ability now. That's cool. But um, anyway, that needs to still die at all costs. You cannot let that live. Plus, the loot hoarder draws me a card, so I have card advantage now. And wow, we have four turns, four, four drops for eternity here. I hope he plays stuff with three or less health. Okay, well, I, I, got, I got my wish, but the whole point was that you know with the raid leader this would deal three damage of course with the raid leader dead that's no longer the case 
Okay, so Light Spawn will die to this plus Axe, but that's still fine. I think that's still better than anything else. So we'll just drop it down. Uh, our Weaponsmith was a was a very good drop there in front of a Raid Leader, I have to say. Oh no, that's bad. Oh, that's really... T wow. So my opponent had a really slow start, but his turn 3 play and turn 4 play were so good, it doesn't even matter. Um, I could, like, coin out and play both of these, but I just get nothing out of it. Well, I do. He'll attack the flesh-eating ghoul, then this thing will kill the dwarf. That's really just not good. No, he'll attack the ghoul, then this thing will kill the dwarf next turn. Okay, so I think that is actually what I want to do. I want to use up as much of my mana as I can. I could have also, I guess, played these two for six mana, swarmed the board like crazy. Maybe that would have been better. Yeah, that probably would have been better, actually. It just, just It would have swarmed the board more, and I wouldn't have thrown away a precious creature. Anyway, my, my play, I think, is still all right. So the plan is he's going to use the dwarf to kill the ghoul because the ghoul's dangerous. The dwarf will stay at two health. Then I'll play the Stormwind Knight, run in and attack the dwarf. That is, of course, assuming he doesn't have Rampage or something to heal this dwarf. That would make me very sad. Slam. Um, interesting. Well, I assume he's got a whirlwind now. Oh, no, he's going to kill it with his axe. I see. Gotcha. Okay. Well, he drew a card and used the axe. That's I'm okay with that. That's fine. He's going to kill my other 2-3. Okay, sure. And what's your 4-mana play? Demolisher. Well, I can't kill it because I can only deal 3 damage to it. So it's going to live, but... It is going to have a lot of distractions. So, hopefully it'll kill one of my 1-1s, one and it does. Alright, now the Demolisher itself can finish off the Stormwind Knight, then I'll use my other Stormwind Knight to kill it off. So, I think that's okay. I think I handled that Demolisher pretty well. I could even Thought Steal next turn, and then play the Stormwind Knight to finish the Demolisher off. Oh no, Fiery War Axe! Oh jeez, well, that's too bad. He still has five mana left over. It's plenty of mana to do something terrible. These cards are starting to get a little bit outclassed here. I could use my Temple Enforcer, Sunwalker, anytime now. Anytime you want to give it to me, game, feel free to do so. Okay, well, I think we are officially at the point where I am behind. Ah, it's not going to do it. Okay, I am going to play this instead of, well... I can play this instead of Thought Stealing, but it'll just die, so let's Thought Steal first. Oh my goodness, Gorhal, that's that's a play. Okay, sure, we'll, we'll do the Storm of Night. I still want to kill off the Demolisher. The 4 health here is clutch. It's, it's preventing death against the Fiery War Axe, and it's ready to trade with this 4-2. Of course, you could play any kind of a buff or something and screw it up. But we have a Gorhal. The only question is, do I play Gorhal before or after the Fiery War Axe? Upgrade. Nice. Shit, he's got a Gore Howl in there. That's scary. Scar the Crusader. Okay, well, first I think I'm going to play the Fiery War Axe, because the Gore Howl should survive for a while. So, I want to do the, the Fiery War Axe first, and in fact, that's perfect here. By the, light. By the light. We don't often get to hear a priest attack, but that's what he says. So I could play the Sunwalker, or I could play this and this. Well, this and this, I mean, they just died of the Fiery War Axe and the Divine Shield. So, yeah, let's throw this down. Let's have the ladies pop Divine Shields against each other. This upgraded War Axe can't quite kill the Sunwalker. He'd need some other point of damage. He'd need, like, a slam or something to pop the Divine Shield or something like that. Silence! Oh, you fucker. Well, at least I get to kill it with a Fiery War Axe, which is nice. But this game is very, very close. I would not say that I have the advantage. Thought Stealing Gorehal certainly helps, but it's it's mm, by no means a guarantee. So that's five mana. Oh, he's armoring up with five mana to spare. That's excellent. Better than him playing a five drop. And the Worgen, well, that's a bigger priority than the Spellbreaker, although the Spellbreaker hits harder. The Worgen is scarier. So we're going to kill the Worgen by the light. And I might even use Holy Fire here, honestly. Yeah, let's just do this right now while we have a window. And then play the Berserker to try to trade against the Scarlet Crusader, not, not do anything fancy. Okay, so we're heading off against each other. He's got three cards, I have three. Life is about equal. He's up to play. I have his Gorhal. 
Question is, does he have his gore huh? well, That's That's the question. He's got his fiery war axe. Okay, well, I think next turn... I'm gonna start the Gore Howl party and kill off the Scarlet Crusader. Or am I gonna just play out some creatures first? Hmm. Let's actually. Yeah, let's play some creatures. And in fact. Let's do this so that I can heal myself up as well and use up all of my mana. I think life might be important soon. The longer the game goes, the higher the odds that he gets his Gore Howl. And then we have a Gore Howl battle. I don't mind, by the way, that he can kill my Violet Teacher with the Scarlet Crusader plus the Fire War X, because I don't have any spells. Weapons do not count as spells. So this is, this is just a 3-5 for 4. I don't mind him using his resources to kill it. That's totally fine in my book. And then uh, the Dragonling mechanic's a really good drop against a Fiery War Axe, because you don't really want to use it against the Dragonling. It's like overkill, but it, the Fiery War Axe doesn't, doesn't kill the Dragonling mechanic. So this is a very good board against his board. It's just a matter of what cards he has. Marximus. Really nice. Really nice name. I wonder if his name is Mark in real life. Okay, it looks like he's going to do the obvious thing. Again, when I say obvious, I don't mean to disparage my opponent's skill. I just mean that's it's what I knew he could do, even without knowing his hand. He's still armoring up, so that means he doesn't have plays. I don't know what he's holding, like what kind of weird cards he's holding that he's not able to play them. Oh, I catch a pretty big break there that he wasn't able to do anything with four mana and two cards. So here comes Gorhowl. And, uh, this mana situation is pretty perfect. I I heal after attacking, like, as a habit. Because as a warrior, you should always armor up after attacking. But as when it's a priest, it doesn't actually make any difference. I just hope he doesn't have any oozes in his deck. That would that would be a sad way to lose Gorhal. Well, if he doesn't get his own Gorhal soon, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. That's one of the most uh, obnoxious things about Thought Steal is Thought Steal takes cards from your opponent's deck. So by definition, anytime you take a card with Thought Steal, you're taking something that the opponent himself doesn't have. It. Oh my God, he has an ooze! Oh no! <laughs> Jeez, that well, that that brings the game back in his favor. So remember, um, he still has a Gore Howl in here. Fuck. Oh man. Well, I'm gonna do Holy Nova. Like I always say, don't wait for blowouts. This is totally fine use of Holy Nova. Um, clears his board, it puts pressure on, and okay, I've used Holy Fire, and I think I've used Argent Commander as well, so I don't think I have, and I think I even might have used both Stormwind Knights, or at least one. Yeah, I've used both, so I don't actually have any direct damage here. Brawl, oh fuck. Well, he had Gorhal and Brawl. Luckily, my best creature survived. That was a stroke of good fortune, but I'm not going to take any credit away from myself, because he top-decked an ooze. To kill my Gorhal. Ah, North Strike Cleric's rather perfect here. So we're going to do this. Kill that creature. Healing it is very important. Not only does it draw me a card, but it stops the axe from killing it. Argent Commander. Fantastic. I'm just going to play that. We need to try to kill him or get him as low as we can. Um, so now Gorhal is not too effective because when he uses Gorhal, it, it causes my creatures to hit him back. And he's at a low enough health that he's in trouble. Okay, so he's able to kill my Northshire Cleric, which is very fortunate for him. Whoa, he's going to kill my harder-hitting creature. Well, that makes certain kind of sense, I guess. But uh, I don't know. I get to draw cards now, which is a problem. So I can get him down to two health. Is it worth killing this thing? Well, first, let's see what card I draw. Always draw cards first. Ah, okay. So let's do this. Let's do this, and in fact, I'm going to just swing at his face. So he can play one creature. If its attack is three or less, it'll have charge. But, I mean, he, that that's not going to handle the tiger. Okay, well, the Gora Howl didn't do anything. It was like a seven-mana kill a chill wind yeti. So, yeah, I'm going to give myself some credit for that game. Really, uh, the Fiery War Axe was probably better than the Gora Howl. Because Gora Howl, yeah, Gora Howl was a 7-mana kill a chill and yeti and take 4 damage for the trouble. So it was really, like, not impressive at all. He played the Ooze. It didn't cost him anything to play the Ooze. It was totally fine. But, um, you know, just, just by playing good cards and having lots of charge creatures and healing and stuff, I was able to win. Priest against Warrior is a very interesting matchup because I think Warriors have better class cards. But the Priest ability is almost strictly better. The Warrior ability is only better like on turn 2 or really anytime the Warrior is at max health. And the Warrior can like use it to gain life. 
Um, the priest ability is once both players are damaged. The priest ability is strictly better. Okay, so the Mad Bombers, I hate to say this, but the Mad Bombers are a very good draw because it means I can play something on turn two. Please, just pass on turn one, would you? Would you please just pass on turn one? Come on. Come on. Oh, you suck. I, you suck. I hate you. Die. Well, I'll do my best to make you die. The odds of Mad Bomber killing this are infinitesimal. They're like 1 in 27. So that's really not going to happen. But I'm just playing it as a 2-3. Well, I just beat 1 in 27 odds to hit myself in the face three times, so that's great. <laughs> there needs to be a fuck you emote. Anyway, I dealt three damage to myself, but I can at least trade off a creature, hopefully. And I've got a decent curve here. Three, four, something on five, and then this on turn six. Uh, this, of course, against mages, like I often say, is not as good, because they can pop to my shield for free, basically. Well, for two mana. They're the only class that can really do that. Druids and rogues can pop divine shields because they take damage to the face for the privilege. Arcane Missiles taking a 50-50 chance. Oh my god, please. Whew. That's fortunate. So she already used the coin to accelerate this. That means she does not have the coin ready for the Fire Blast. She decides to get cheeky and sneak extra damage through. She'll pay for that because now I play Flesh Eating Ghoul. And when these trade, the ghoul gets big. The fact that the Mad Bomber hit me for three actually is really devastating because three extra damage could make a huge difference against mages. Luckily, I'm a priest, so I can at some point start healing myself, but I've got better shit to do than heal myself for at least the next three turns. Turn four, turn five, and then turn six. Like, I, I don't have time to heal myself. Okay, here I think I'll keep my surprise in my back pocket and just play the bigger creature. So we're going to try to catch up a little bit. She did get some card advantage. But because the Arcane Missiles whiffed, um, she basically just went down a card to deal two damage to my face. So I'd say that I'm doing all right. She's got seven cards to my six, soon to be seven. And I was the first player, so I've caught up. Ah, she's going to do Mad Bomber. Oh my god. You, Jesus. Well, the Mad Bomber failed me, and it succeeded for her. The odds of it hitting twice are very low, because there were four targets total. So that's extremely irritating. Um, is this the right play? Yes, it is. So, m the important thing is when you're up against mages, just to make sure that your stuff stays at two health, and it did, so that's fine. Now, if she plays a Gurubashi Berserker, I can steal it and win the game. Come on, just play it. I'll take a Mogushin Warden, that's fine too. Come on. Oh, you suck. So she's gonna kill my light, spawn. That took her whole turn though, so I'm not that bothered. And, yeah, we'll do the Sunwalker. I mean, yes, it's basically a Chill Wind Yeti, but at least it's a Chill Wind Yeti that costs her two mana to pop off the Divine Shield. Ah, oh, that Mad Bomber. If it just hadn't hit my Ghoul twice... It didn't, if it had hit my Light Spawn twice, I would have been totally fine with it. But it had to hit the Ghoul. Boo. Anyway, we're fine, or as fine as you can be against a Mage. I've got a five Toughness creature here and another one here. That they survive Flame Strike. I mean, it's it's nice. She can't pick away at them because I can heal. Of course, she can just kill them straight away. That's that's definitely a thing she can do. Okay. Well, here, I could play the Argent Commander, but I'd rather Thought Steal because I've got two two drops, even if I whiff on the Thought Steal, and I'd like to save this to actually remove a creature. Ravenholt Assassin and Mana Worm. Hmm. Well, let's do this and this. So if she flame strikes that'll be her whole turn and i still get a card off the loot hoarder then i can play ravenholt assassin next turn if she doesn't flame strike or play blizzard or cone of cold this is actually seven damage she's down to 11 this thing could actually threaten to kill her off okay no flame strike no blizzard no cone of cold excellent her five minute play needs to be gurubashi berserker come on you know you want to oh she's gonna kill my storm of night well i could steal this is that worth it um i think so i think that's worth it so we'll do this. Let's play a Mana Worm. Swing. 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 Okay. So now the game plan is this is 7 damage that I can deal, and this is another 4. So I've kind of got 11 damage in my back pocket. Now that's not exactly true because this has to take a turn. So the idea is you play this first, get 7 damage through, then you play this and hopefully finish the opponent off. Fireball on this is awesome because it's half her mana and it means she's not flame striking. So that's excellent. Yep. Yep. This is great. So we're going to get like four more damage through. That's that's fan fiddly -tastic. Don't care about the ooze at all in the slightest. Okay, can I actually win this turn? Two plus four is... Well, two, sorry, two plus two is four. Four plus four is eight. 
that I'm threatening to win with Holy Fire? Hmm. Um, I think this is a bit of a safer way to do it. It's going to be really difficult for her to deal with that thing. I'm healing this creature, not myself, to prevent the ooze from getting the free kill on it. So now I'm threatening to kill her with what I have on the board, and even if she kills most of what I have, the Ravenhold Assassin comes through and then the Holy Fire finishes her off. Um, it's very unlikely that she can kill this. She'd need to have Cone of Cold or Blizzard or Frost Nova to freeze it. Or Spell Damage plus Flame Strike. It would have to be Cobalt Geomancer or Blood Mage Thalnos plus Flame Strike to actually kill it. And she clearly doesn't have Flame Strike, or she would have played it like two turns ago when it would have been super awesome. Or last turn. Cult Master makes no difference, so um, that really doesn't do anything for her. That makes no difference. Um, she's actually still dead right now, unless she fishes out a really good card, like a Cone of Cold or a Frost Nova. That makes no difference. So this is nine damage that I have right here. And she sees it, and she concedes. Great. Well, those are some two pretty good games. Mages were kind of gone for a while, but now they've made a resurgence. There are... A lot of mages out and about, and look at that. We're up to nine wins. It's pretty exciting. So I've been here a few times, and I am ashamed to say that uh, more often than not, so more than 50% of the time, when I have... Wait, is that actually true? I don't know if that's true. I was going to say that more than 50% of the time when I reach nine wins, I don't make it past nine. I don't actually know if that's true, though. Um, I'm going to actually, if those of you who stick around for my post-run bonus hour... That's something that we'll take a look at. Um, have I, like, what percentage of the time do I make it above nine if I reach nine since the patch? So we got Ivan the Paladin. That's an awesome name. And unfortunately, I can't really profit from using the coin. I mean, I can play the Loot Hoarder, and then if he makes a recruit, trade the Loot Hoarder in and draw a card. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do that just to, just to stop him from getting any board presence. Otherwise, he makes a recruit, then I play the Loot Hoarder. And then he can, like, do something else. Like, I just want to keep his board clear. I'm just sick of losing the Paladins. What I really want him to do is not to make a Recruit, though. I want him to make a real creature. Okay, he's not going to oblige me, because then I could have used Shadow Word Paint on it. Unfortunately, I don't top deck a 2-drop. I have one more chance to top deck a 2-drop. And, well, I top deck a 1-drop. This would have been better on turn 1, because it would have stopped him from playing Recruits and let me draw cards. Luckily, he's not going to make a Recruit now, because he's obviously not going to give me that chance, but he's going to play something else. Like a knife juggler? That's fine. I'm gonna just kill it with Shadow Word Pain. What do you don't what do you don't don't even finger your other cards there? You don't have other cards. Shadow Word Pain, obviously a very good card in its own right, but one important uh thing about it is that it protects North Shire Clerics really well. Most things that will drop early that will throw a North Shire Cleric will die to Shadow Word Pain. Next turn, I'd like to play the Dragonling Mechanics. So what my opponent needs to do here is play something that will threaten the North Shire Cleric. That's the one thing that might make me do something different. Although, actually, I can't really protect this anymore, can I? <laughs> yeah, if he drops a threat against this, he'll he'll get to kill it. The Cobra, yes. Now, unfortunately, I cannot run in, damage it, and draw a card, because, of course, the Cobra will just kill it. Um, is there anything I can do? No, this Cobra's getting two kills. That is a shame. And the North Strike Cleric was just a 1-3 for one mana that dealt the damage and then died. Now, the nice thing about this mechanic is that the, the Dragonling here will get to k finish the Cobra off, but that's assuming he doesn't um, put, you know, Divine Shield or Shatter Some Cleric or Blessing of Kings or whatever on it. Things can get very ugly very fast here with this Cobra. Obviously, if there was any way for me to kill it, I would have. Luckily, he just plays a Tiger. Now, the Tiger's still good. It'll get to kill my stuff pretty well, but it's definitely better than other stuff that could have happened. So he's getting some card advantage against me here, quite unfortunately. Ah, uh, you're too late, Infiltrator. You're just too late. So we'll do this. We'll attack him, because there's nothing better to do. And I guess I'll spend the Panther for sure. Do I play the Infiltrator, or do I play the Berserker? The Berserker just dies, but I, then again, he might use the Panther to kill the... I mean, the Panther's... Sorry, his Tiger's killing something anyway, so it might as well be the Berserker. Like, I'm not, I'm not valuing this that highly at this point. Sucks that I was at five mana. Six would have been... A lot better, so I can play the stuff. But now I can start playing the stuff. So he needs to apply pressure on this turn, besides just killing a creature with the tiger. Because if he doesn't apply pressure, I, I can actually start to crawl back. This, well, it's pretty good, actually. My tiger dies against it. 
and the Berserker doesn't die against it, but doesn't kill it either. So yeah, that, that's actually a three mana drop that is shockingly and embarrassingly good. And he's got two of them. Oh my crapsicles. Well, balls. Ah, Sunwalker. Okay, I think that's got to be the play here, right? Well, let's think. If I Temple Enforcer, this is five health, still dies to the Tiger, but it does survive against a Golem. Hmm. Yeah, well, well, let's think about this. I could do this to kill the Tiger, but then it dies to a Golem. I could do this to protect my stuff. He hasn't been playing any buffs. I bet he doesn't have buffs. I'm going to do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something crazy here. We're going to do this. And I'm going to kill off the Tiger there. And then we're going to pass the turn. So I'm banking on him not having a Consecration or buffs. Bit of a crazy thing to bank on, but I think um, I think he would have played buffs earlier if he'd had them. So as long as he doesn't have Consecration, I'm fine. Avenging Wrath! Oh, well, he didn't have Consecration, but that is even worse. Oh my god, that was... They all went on my creatures. That fucking sucks. You've got to be fucking kidding me. That was terrible. <laughs> and now there's a Noble Sacrifice here. Stops me from using Archie Commander. Well, Mad Bomber, you're going to have to save me again. Oh, it was uh, <laughs> Repentance. Okay. Guess it's a good thing I didn't play my Temple Enforcer. Okay, well, this game went straight to the dogs. No question about it. With that Avenging Wrath. I mean, the Avenging Wrath, that was fine. The fact that of the, what is it, eight shots, seven hit my creatures. Like, that was extremely improbable. More of it needed to hit my face, and then I would have had a chance. Like, if he had at least popped one of these golems against my Sunwalker, that would have been okay. Yeah, this is pretty much over now. I, I don't see a way to come back. He's got massive card advantage. He's got the play. I mean, yes, he's playing a Twilight Drake. It really could be anything at this point. Pretty wimpy Twilight Drake. I'll probably kill it with my commander, although then the commander dies to a golem. I don't even know. Interesting. Does that have a cost of one or zero? Well, I don't remember. I, guess, I think it's one. Okay. Do I play this? Yes. Let's kill the bigger one. Can't do anything about that golem. I don't think there's any point in revealing this guy, so we'll just pass the turn. It feels weird to be upset to get to nine wins. Because nine wins is, you know, it's hard to get to. It's an achievement. But it would have been nice. It certainly would have been nice to, to make it past with Priest for the first time. All right, uh, let's drop this down. Let's kill off one of these golems. No point in healing this. It still dies. I will play the fairy dragon. Now, my reasoning for that is that if the twilight drake kills the fairy dragon, then the stormwind knight will finish off the drake. If the damaged golem kills the fairy dragon, well, the, twi the drake will probably kill the infiltrator, and then I'll use the stormwind knight to kill the drake. And then, of course, all that goes out the window if he puts blessing of kings on this or something and just kills my 6-6. Six -six. He has way too many cards. He should have, like, you know, two cards right now. The fact that he has four is just a testament to how badly he's been owning me this game. Okay, so he's swinging at me, which is kind of worrying. It makes me think he's got a Consecration or something. Or Pyromancer Equality? No, not Pyromancer. Wait, 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 what? He's going to kill everything. That's weird. Um, I don't really understand that play. I guess he maybe, maybe he thought he was behind? Like, is that it? He thought he was behind, so he decided to clear the board? Like, he spent two cards to, to kill everything. I, I don't really get it. So now, now, we're, now we're in a top deck war. We have the same number of cards, and I'm a little bit ahead on the board. His hero ability is better than mine, because he can keep putting 1-1s one out. But I have Holy Nova in my back pocket. Which will allow me to clear out everything at a time of my choosing. Is that time now? Um, yes, that time is now. So we're going to do this. Kill off his creature. Heal myself. Play the hunter. 
Okay, so here we go. He's got two cards to my one. I'm about to draw my second, though, on my turn. So we're equal on cards, essentially. I have a board lead. I have stuff to clear out his recruits. If he plays a big thing, as long as it's not too big, I can kill it with one of my cards. So he needs, like, two good cards to get ahead. Hammer of Wrath would be actually an amazing card for him, or True Silver Champion. Kill. Well, True Silver Champion let him kill both of my things. Hammer of Wrath would let him kill one and then draw a card. Ah, so here was where the Dark Iron Dwarf nerf really helps me. We're going to play Violet Teacher, which is spectacular. Can I win? 5 plus 5 is 10. No. Kill the Dark Iron Dwarf. Get a 1-1, which is really huge. Heal 5, which is really huge. Trade away my Piglet. He's had two... Notice he's played two silences. These are both silenced. And they're both completely irrelevant. Why I think silence is overrated. Volume 557. I've talked about this before. Oh, he had, a, he had a really terrible top deck for him. Wow. Well, okay. After all that whining, I am in the lead. Two, four, seven, eight. I still don't kill him or anything. But this Violet student's pretty good. I get to kill off the Voodoo Doctor. He could still come back. Like, like if he got Tyrion Fordring, say, I, I wouldn't really have much of an answer to it. I'd have to like I'd have to throw away every single thing into it to kill it. Like there are definitely things you could play. Even a Sunwalker would be a problem. So it's not it's not over yet, but I do have of course have a very big advantage. So anyway, after after all that whining about uh, losing, I'm actually I'm actually set to win this game unless he gets a really really lucky card. That unfortunately is not what he needed right there. Unfortunately for him, of course. Let's check if I can win. Two, four, plus five is nine. Okay. Uh, yes, I will give him his loot. Swing. Swing. Light spawn. I'll heal up one of these guys. Don't want to unenrage this, particularly. And he's going to concede. Wow! Alright, well, made it to 10 wins. With Priest, that's the first time breaking past 9 wins for Priest. And of course, folks, it's not over yet. I would say my odds of making it to 12 are low, but they're not 0. It can always possibly happen, so that's pretty exciting. Now, as I was about to say, um, when I first saw Hearthstone and I was watching people play, and I saw the silence mechanic, I thought that silence would be the kind of thing that people would underrate. Because it you know, doesn't kill the creature, it's not as sexy as hard removal. So I thought it was like really, really awesome. But having played Hearthstone a lot, we're coming up actually on my 180th arena run. This is, I think, my 179th. I have actually come to think that silence is overrated, that people value it too highly. That's not to say it's bad. Certainly, of course, there are times where it, you know, wins you the game. But it's uh, just not quite as good as people think it is, and there are definitely lots of times where it's totally useless. So I value it sparingly. You can see in that game, he had a Spellbreaker and an Owl, and they were both just bodies that were overpriced. So here I am first, which is a shame. I'd like to be second, so I could coin out one and play the other on turn three. As it is, I might miss turn two, which I have actually not done so far in this arena, I don't think. I don't think I've ever healed myself on turn two. Well, there's a first time for everything. And that's a bad start. Definitely not the start we want to have when we're fighting for the 11th win against Noogie the Shaman here. Oh, who has a coin play? And it is Shattered Sun Cleric. Well, he's just in the lead simply by virtue of having dumb stuff. Do I play this? Or this? Well, both of them will die. But this one deals a little bit more damage. It deals one damage to this shield bearer before it goes down like a clown with a frown upside down. So that's what we'll do. So yeah, my opponent has a huge lead already, because he played on turn one and on turn two with the coin, which I wish I had. Grumble, grumble, grumble. If he'd been first, he would have played the shield bearer on turn one, I would have done nothing on turn one. On turn two, he just would have had to make a totem rather than the Shattered Sun Cleric, and I could have made a three drop. Would have been a totally different game, folks. Ah, he's going to kill me that way. Oh, God, that's bad. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, we're just going to throw this down, but... It's not going to survive. Worst case, you could use the Shattered Sun plus the Axe to kill it. Then he's got a 1-3. Now, luckily, he actually plays a Totem here instead of a quote-unquote real card. That's awesome. That gives me a fighting chance. Again, I'm at turn 5, wishing that it were already turn 6. 
<laughs> okay, well, we have to do this. I could actually play this first to see if I can get it enraged, but no, let's just do Mad Bomber. See if I get super lucky. Uh, nope. And I guess we'll just play this guy. So he can use the Shield Bear plus the Axe to kill off my Torn Warrior. But if he attacks with the Shield Bearer first, he'll take 5 damage. If he attacks with the Axe first, the Shield Bearer will die. He spent his whole turn playing No Motion Venter. Ah, oh, Fork Lightning, of course. I thought maybe with one mana left over, he wouldn't do anything, but no. Not a chance. He's actually going to take the damage. Yeah, that was a mistake. He should have attacked this first. He took 3 extra damage there. And I don't even know what would get me back into the game at this point. Um, let's try Sunwalker and hope he doesn't have a Hex. I think if he has a Hex, he just wins. As it is, he can pop Divine Shield with Shield Bearer. The Shield Bearer's done his job for sure. But uh, then I still have a 4-5, which is, you know, good. If he has Hex, I'm totally screwed. Okay, no Hex. Excellent. Or you could say, Hexellent. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Stormforged Axe. Ah, damn it. So now he can pop Divine Shield with... No, he's not going to do that. He's going to pop Divine Shield with the creature. He's going to... Whoa, that's aggressive. He's really taking a lot of damage. Like, I haven't hit him this much, folks. You, you see that, right? So I could play the Tiger and the Fairy Dragon. I think... I'd rather do this. And... Well, I could hit him. I'm just gonna hit him. Hide behind my taunter. So you can use these two to kill my thing, but then I've got this, smacking him, and then I've got the tiger, which is five more damage. If I can get Holy Fire out of my deck, I might be able to burn him out before he wins, be beats me, because he should beat me. He's been crushing me all game. That's, there's a taunter in the way, I'm afraid. You can just take four more damage to the face, and, you know, then get through. Fire Elemental, and he'll win. Hex, and he'll win. Like, I'm just behind here. Lightning Storm. Oh, he's taking a coin flip against my Sunwalker there. He wins the coin flip. Well, alas, alas, alas. It's going to hit me in the face. All right, let's take a look at the situation. Storm one night. Hmm. Okay. I think... I, 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 can wanna, I wanna Shadow Word Pain this to stop him from drawing cards, but I'd rather put creatures on the board. I could do the Fairy Dragon, it'll die to the Axe, but he doesn't really wanna get hit anymore. If he has a buff, then he'll be able to use the Totem. Hmm, I could Thought Steal. You know what, I'm gonna Thought Steal later. Let's do the Tiger and the Dragon. So what I'm doing here is I'm making a strategic decision that he is ahead of me on cards. I can't afford to spend time killing off this mana totem. I just have to have him. I just have to let him get card advantage, and try to race him out. Now that's a really good play. If he doesn't have a fork lightning, jeez, he has a fork lightning. Ah. Well, if he didn't have fork lightning, I could have hit him for eight. Now I can hit him for five. He's down to six. And if I can get holy fire at some point, I will win. He's got four, five, six, seven. I've got enough health. Okay, let's thought steal. Always draw cards first. That was terrible. Well, that was just terrible. Um, we're going to hit him for five, though. Going to do this. Swing for two more. Play the Infiltrator. Do I want to Earthshock to prevent him from having spell damage? I don't think so. I could Earthshock this to stop him drawing cards. You know what? There's really no point in doing that, I don't think. I'd rather keep the Earthshock for in case he plays a Taunt. Because this card is coming at the end of his turn, and like either he stops me from winning on this turn, or he doesn't. So um, I need to get holy. Actually, he can kill all the stuff I have, but like I, I need to get like holy fire or something. I was really hoping with thought steel to get like a lightning bolt or a lava burst or a rock biter weapon even, but it was not to be. Okay, so now earth shock's really good against the stone claw. Ah uh, man, this is coming down pretty close. I have to be very careful here. North Shark Cleric. I can't heal anything. Oh, I can heal his thing. I'm going to do that. I'm going to heal his minion and draw a card. Ah, uh, damn it. All right. Well, we're going to do what we can. So I'm going to Earthshock the Taunt Totem. This also prevents him from getting other Taunt Totems. 
I'm going to hit him in the face. Does he kill me? Six, eight, ten. He could, with a bloodlust, kill me. Uh, that's the risk I have to take, unfortunately. So we're going to Shadow Pain the Flame Tongue to reduce some of his damage. And swarm up. So yeah, does a Bloodlust win? What is this? 4, 6, 6 plus 12. Yeah, Bloodlust will win on the nose. But that just seemed like the best chance I had. Well, that's not Bloodlust. Does he also have Bloodlust? No, he does not have Bloodlust. So he has to kill everything I have. That raid leader is really good because it lets him kill off everything with extreme efficiency. So I need to get Holy Fire here or my other Stormwind Knights. I think, or a Holy Nova. I have two Holy Novas in here. Why do I have two Holy Novas and halfway through the deck I haven't gotten a single one? Well, I've still got some outs, but I think this is my last turn to win. Jungle Panther. Gotta be kidding me. Well, I think he's got enough damage to kill me. What is this? 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 plus 4. Well, it's 15, but with 7 cards, the odds of him not being able to do 4 damage are pretty much 0. It would have to be the most unlucky Shaman Hand of all time to not kill me. I'm just pissed I didn't draw either of my two Holy Novas in half of the deck. That's very improbable. Alas, what are you going to do? Well yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, wait, wait, wait. Is he saying well played because he doesn't have an answer? That would be unbelievable. That would be not the luckiest, because there definitely have been luckier things that have happened, but this would be one of one of the luckiest things in the history of my channel if he had no way to deal four damage to me. That would be extremely improbable. So that's actually three damage because it buffed up his unbound elemental. He just needs a single other point of damage and he wins. Oh my god! <laughs> he didn't have it! That is, wow, that is one of the luckiest things that has ever happened in the history of this channel. For a shaman with seven cards to not have a single point of damage. That's incredible. He might have, I don't know if he screwed himself by making this totem? He was hoping for a taunt, of course. If it had been a taunt, he could have stopped me, because I top decked another useless card. Um... But maybe if he had like a Shattered Sun Cleric or a Dark Iron Dwarf or something that would have won him the game, then he he screwed himself because he had seven minions on the board and he couldn't play another minion. So let me just let me just mention this. Like basically, given that he had a Stormforged Axe, like any charge creature, Shattered Sun Cleric, Dark Iron Dwarf, and like Shaman cards like Lightning Bolt, Rockbiter Weapon, Wind Fury, Wind Speaker, Fire Elemental, like there's just so many cards. Bloodlust, of course. That would have won the game. It was really quite incredible. So that's kind of nifty. So basically, I got a huge stroke of luck, with the result of which being that I got to 11. But I will say this. Good players get lucky more often than bad players. You know, I gave myself a chance to get lucky there. My odds of winning were very small that game. But I made a strategic decision to try to burn him out rather than trying to trade. And it, it gave me a tiny, tiny, tiny chance of winning. And because I t gave myself that tiny, tiny chance, I actually ended up winning that game. So that's why, folks, you don't want to complain if you always lose in the arena. It means you, you aren't giving yourself enough chances to win. So anyway, we are actually fighting for the 12th win, and this would be so funny if I lose this game because this is, like, the perfect hand for my deck. Well, not the perfect, but, like, really, really, really good. This is just phenomenal. I mean, I wish I were the first player with this hand because I don't even need the coin. I've got one, two, three, and a choice of... Uh, one, two, and a choice of threes, and a four... Please don't be the 1-1. One, one. Okay, thank you. Um, just hoping it wasn't the 1-1 one, one, so I could kill it with my Worgen. This is really great. So now, um, do I? Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm, there's no reason to coin anything out here. The only thing that could go wrong is if he flips a spell damage totem and has forked lightning. But if he doesn't have that, this is great stuff. I can even coin out the Stormwind Knight if I need an answer to something he plays. That is phenomenal because... This just, I mean, I just kill it, and it's just a three-mana cycle of card. So there's a couple of cho choices here. So one choice is to play the Torn Warrior, 
and then run my two guys into the mana tide totem. Another choice is to play the raid leader, and then one of these will kill the mana tide totem by itself, and the other can attack his face. Now you might be wondering, well, Boris, why is, is, there, is there even a question? Well, the raid leader dies to lightning storm, whereas the torn warrior has a chance. So if he is holding lightning storm, then I, I give him an extra coin flip that he has to win in order for the lightning storm to pay off. And in fact, it's a really dire coin flip because the odds of lightning storm hitting, killing both this and my berserker is only 25%. And then if it fails, these guys become enraged and hit him for 10. So I actually will sacrifice um, a little bit of damage. Basically, I'm sacrificing three damage by not playing the raid leader. But I think it's worth it to play around lightning storm. This is such an amazing start. Even if he has like decent cards, decent isn't good enough anymore because I got such a huge advantage. So I want to make sure I don't give him any out that I can afford that I don't have to. Okay, this is a pretty good drop form actually because since I didn't play the Panther, I don't have an easy way of killing this, and Raid Leader isn't good enough. So I have to like leave this alive, which is quite irritating actually. Maybe I should have played. Ah, I didn't. I didn't play around the four four possibility. Um, so now if I leave this alive, Lightning Storm will decimate everything I have. Yeah, we're gonna just keep on playing it safe. I'm just gonna trade in my Infiltrator and most of the health of my Stormwind Knight, so I'm continuing to play around Lightning Storm. This advantage of my decisions is that I haven't really put much damage on him, so I haven't really dealt that much damage to him. Man, he just has some really big stuff in his deck. Yeah, that's actually working really well because I don't have my own big stuff. Well, what I'm gonna do here is play the Flesh Eating Ghoul, Coin, and now Raid Leader. So we're going to swing for 9 damage, and the hope here is that if he doesn't have disruption, which he seems not to, or he should have like been killing my stuff earlier, then all he can do is use the Spiteful Smith to kill my Tauren Warrior, and then I swing for tons of damage. Fire Elemental on the Raid Leader is a smart play, but it does grow my Ghoul a bit. And then my Ghoul grows a little bit more. And defend- oh, whoa! I haven't seen this Defender of Argus in a long time. Holy crap. Okay, so I could play the Panther and the Tidehunter. Or the Defender of Argus and the Tidehunter. Well, this is, let's see, four, six, eight. I think we'll do this. This seems like a totally legit move. He seems not to have Lightning Storm. He clearly would have played it by now if he did have it. Um, and we'll just play these guys. Because, again, I'm counting on him not having Lightning Storm. And just try to race him out before uh, he can catch back up. So at this point, the card I really want to see is Holy Fire. That's five damage to the face. And if anything survives, I pretty much win at that point. The Panther actually could be really strong as well. So if he does have Lightning Storm, I play Panther. Then he can't kill it. Unless he has like another Lightning Storm. And um, the Panther can get some damage through. So that was a pretty good use of Windspeaker. He can now use the Fire Elemental to bust through and kill a couple of my creatures. It does have to suicide against my ghoul. Don't be taunt. It's not taunt. Excellent. Well, now uh, he's in real trouble here. Because I can get him down to two health. So I'll just play the Violet Teacher and Thought Steal. See if I can get a uh, Lightning Bolt or Rock Biter up. And I got Fire Elemental. That's good enough. So, yes, we are going to hit him with everything. I'm not going to stop and kill the Spell Damage Totem because I want him to be at um, three health. And I'll actually just hit him extra, just in case he has a little bit of life gain or something. Every extra point of damage matters. Well, this is one of those comical arenas where my last game is like the easiest game of them all. It's not so much because my deck was amazing. I think I just got a really amazing draw. I got one, two, three, four, essentially. And I had enough answers to his stuff. Plus, he never had any answers to my stuff. Like, did he kill anything with anything? Like, he... Yeah, he never killed anything at all. He just played big creatures one at a time. And because I had the advantage, I was able to win. And I am willing to say that I've won here. I don't know what he could possibly do. He can't heal enough and kill everything um, to, to get around Fire Elemental. Oh, wow, I guess he can. Wow. Uh, if, if the Fork Lightning had hit differently. Oh, no, he's... Wow, he's actually... Oh, my God. <laughs> well, perhaps I started counting my chickens before they hatched. Oh, no, never mind. I forgot this Wind Speaker had already attacked. Wow, that was close. Okay, so we'll do that. Anyway, even if he hadn't done that, the, the Panther would have been a threat to win. So we kill him with his own Fire Elemental, and that is two items off of Papa Boris's bucket list. This is my first time breaking nine wins with Priest, and also my first time getting to 12 wins as Priest. So thank you so much for watching. If, if this video doesn't make you like and or subscribe to my channel, I don't know what video will, so please do that. I'd appreciate your support. And let's commence now the post-run ritual. 
So last time I got up to 12 wins, I got 500 gold. That's not happening this time. This is still good, though. This is, what, 310? 330 and 100 dust? I'll take that. Almost up to 4,000 gold. Wow, I mean, I'm obviously going to go down after um, I pay the next arena entry fee, but, man, if my next arena is a good one, I'll be above 4,000. That is huge. Unremarkable. Unremarkable. I think I already have two of those Cold Light Sears. Damn it. I was actually looking through my collection earlier, and there's quite a few rares that I don't have, but I keep getting the duplicate packs. So, Priest, we got a rare Mass Dispel. It's gold. I already have two of them. That's unfortunately not one of the rare cards I don't have, so 100 Dust is added to my pile. I have something else that's new. Shadow Word Pain. What the... Oh. What? what? Oh, right, for leveling up my Priest. Yes. That's cool. And we'll take a sneak peek at our next arena. Just, wait, I was at I was at six and two, wasn't I? I got six wins in a row, and that's like you know in the upper brackets. That's pretty crazy. So it's gonna be mage, shaman, or warrior. I think I might have to do mage. Uh, I think I might have to do mage, is if, if if my memory serves. So let me real quick then check my stats, and we're gonna answer this question. No, not my OK Cupid stats. My there we go, Hearthstone stats. So priest. 12 wins, gold rewards, what was that, folks, 330, 330, I think it was 330, um, okay, so since the patch, okay, I was wrong, um, I have made it to 9 wins 4 times, and I've made it above 9 wins 8 times, so actually, when I ma do make it to 9 wins, I make it beyond 9 wins 2 thirds of the time, which is actually pretty impressive, I, I'm, Actually, I didn't even know that that was a thing I could do, and that's apparently a thing that I am doing. So, excellent. Um, Priest now is super, super consistent. It's got a success rate of 82%, but only 6.9 average wins, which is the, tied with Hunter and actually below Warrior and Shaman. Interesting facts about Papa Boris's Hearthstone statistics. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end, so thanks again, and I will see you back here tomorrow for some more Hearthstone action. See you soon.